With the man Clatt, nobody knows more about college football than this man Clatt. We already know that Michigan won. Yep. But can we for a second show the world why they won? I haven't seen anybody really talk about the fact that Michigan bullied them up front, and I believe that Washington had a little bit too much respect for McCarthy, the quarterback, as opposed to the running back. What I noticed was very simple. Washington did not define the gap for the defensive linemen. Washington kept their defensive tackles head up, head up, and as a result, Michigan got a whole bunch of one-on-ones. Can you speak to me a little bit about what was going on with the rushing attack for Michigan and Washington's defense? Well, first and foremost, you've got to understand one thing about Michigan. Michigan, I don't think that there was a better run game in college football at exploiting if one player was out of their gap. Okay, mm. so we talk about mm. gap control. Basically, yeah, if, you back to it. It, if you just freeze it like this, everybody is supposed to be via alignment have a gap. Yes, so sir. this end, he's got the uh, the C gap right here. This tackle's supposed to have the B gap. That linebacker's got the A. This, this is where I'm with you, and it gets confusing. Thank if you. If you play head up on the guard, now it's called a two-way go. So now that defensive tackle can take the B gap or the A gap over here. That means that number 11, the linebacker, has to read the play of the defensive tackle and insert himself into the front accordingly. But if he reads it wrong, which happens right here, <laughs> then he's out of his so, gap. Here's my question. Usually you only ever see this first quarterbacks that you have the utmost fear of. Yeah. You want to play two gaps so you can go left, you can go right, but you don't have this type of assignment and alignment versus dominant rushing attacks. What was the thought process from DeBoer and the coaches for Washington going into this game. I think that they were very concerned about basically what I would call the gap schemes from Michigan. Mm. So what you saw a lot of here was duo. Duo play was kind of a, it's more of a zone-based scheme, but it's it's zone that's moving toward the play side, or excuse me, uh, the, uh, blocking down and then without the puller. Yep. But what you end up having here is that Michigan normally loves to block down on the front side and then pull somebody around. That's gap scheme, okay? And I think that they were really concerned with that. And so what they wanted to do is play their linebackers off the ball gotcha. so that they could get away from the double teams. And then what you're trying to do is let them react. But the problem with that is that Michigan just came straight, straight at them. And, and when you essentially have a, a veteran running back like Blake Corum, he can choose his gap, Donovan Edwards, the same way. If he sees one seam, then he can exploit it. And again, Michigan is as good as anybody in college football at exploiting when one person does something wrong in the run defense, and they did that a couple of different times. Okay, you think about the fact that Michigan, they beat Washington, but before that, they beat Alabama, and before that, they beat Ohio State. How does this championship, where does this championship rank amongst modern-day college football playoff championships? Yeah. You beat Ohio State, you beat Alabama, you beat Washington. You know the sport better than anybody. How great of an accomplishment is what yeah. you just witnessed? Okay, so so there's there's two ways to think about this. The first is is that we should have all seen this coming. Why? Well, they've got the best defensive tackles in college football, defensive line play, and they've been the most consistent and most dominant team of the entire season. Generally speaking, that team wins the national championship. Yep. The best defensive line, most dominant team. Now. The other part of this, though, is also incredibly unique. Why does Michigan not make sense at all? Well, for 15 years, we've seen a very specific style of team win the national championship. A team that recruits at the top end, has a top four recruiting class, in particular when you average that over a four-year span, and they have a top five composite roster. Michigan doesn't have that. They don't have five-star players littered all over their roster. So in some ways, this is the most unique championship that we've had in college football in 15 years. And in fact, I think last night actually presented a lot of hope moving forward for a multitude of different programs around the country. You no longer have to be Alabama or Georgia or Clemson from a couple of years ago. You no longer have to be dominant at every single position. Now you can actually win it by developing, being great at the line of scrimmage, tackling in space. The game is moving away from dominant programs, and I believe we're in an era now that we're going to see more teams compete for a national championship because we've got a little bit of prolifer proliferation proliferation of talent. There it is. Around okay. the country. But question about this, because Michigan did win, but did the best team win? Because Michael Penix missed a whole bunch of open wide receivers in last night's game. He did not play like his normal dominant, throwing strikes to everybody's yeah. self. Did the best team win that football game, or did Washington let up too easy? Uh, the best team absolutely won the football game. The best team in a matchup 
has several different ways that they can win the game. Think of it like a highway or an interstate, right? Michigan had a four-lane highway. There was four different ways that they could have won the football game. Dominate on defense, dominate with the run game. J.J. McCarthy plays really well. A lot of different ways. Washington was on a one-way street. Yeah. If Michael Penix didn't play out of his mind, they had no shot of beating that Michigan team. What does that tell me? That Michigan was a better team overall. They were more consistent. They were more dominant. There was a reason that they were the favorite team. So I think they're the best team won. Okay, you mentioned the name Michael Penix. I believe that this is the best quarterback class we have seen in a mighty long time as it pertains to NFL draft picks. Caleb Williams, he should be the surefire number one overall pick. You have a guy by the name of Drake May. You have Jaden Daniels. Bo Nix is in there. Michael Penix as well. If J.J. McCarthy decides to declare, Quinn Ewers amongst others. But let's talk for a moment about Penix. Yeah. I tweeted yesterday he lost a whole bunch of money in the game. Probably. He played bad, and then not only did, did he play bad, but also he accentuated some of the concerns about him. A lack of mobility, a lack of toughness. You see him walking off the field holding his ribs. You see him having to be helped up play after play after play. Did he lose a lot of money, and how much money, or at least, let's not talk money, how did your opinion of Penix change well, after last night's performance? It didn't change a great deal, uh, to be honest with you. I, I think that great players at the quarterback position, they can have an off night. Hold on, no. I got to pause you there, Clap, because I'll be watching you every time you do a game. You and Gus do a phenomenal job. Let's go back. Deshaun Watson, he played great 2016 college yep, football championship. Tua Tungavailoa, he came in. He looked the safety off, hit Devontae Smith. He played great college football national championship. Trevor Lawrence, as a true freshman, he played great college football national championship. Stenson Bennett balled out back-to-back years college football national championship. Stroud in a loss played Stroud out in a loss played great so i haven't seen great quarterbacks at the college level not play great on the biggest stage as of late obviously mccarthy didn't play well as well but we think higher of him i can't take that from you just I, yet I, I i will say i will say this i'll blow your mind for a moment if Ooh. Quinn ewers makes the proper throw and beats washington then then Penix probably doesn't lose draft slots because the last memory that we have is him just shredding your longhorn no that's real Right? So, like, in a lot of ways, he might get taken five, six, seven picks later than he would have if Ewers just makes the throw into the corner, the proper back throw, shoulder. to Adonai Mitchell on the back shoulder at the pylon. I mean, that's that just entered my head what you're talking <laughs> about. But I, I will say this. Okay. So much of, of the way that we should evaluate quarterbacks needs to be what did they do or what they were what were, were they required to do in college versus what are they going to be required to do in the National Football League. Okay. You see, if you just take the two quarterbacks last night, Michael Penix was asked or required to throw between 20 and 35 last night because he attempted over 50 passes. NFL-style throw. That means that it, it is a drop-back-style pass, that it is a post-snap read, and I've got to throw with anticipation and accuracy and timing to tight windows. That's what he's asked to do a lot. Now, he didn't do it great last night, but on the converse, you know, on the opposite side, J.J. McCarthy is asked to do that maybe five or six times mm -hmm. in a game. You know, so, so to me, Penix's game travels to the next level. What I saw against Texas suggests that he can go and he can do that at the next level. He can make accurate throws down the field. Now, he didn't against Michigan. Michigan's going to be a very unique style of defense. Why? Because they can get pressure with just four. They can drop everybody else in coverage. They were running a lot of single safety bracket style coverage on the outside. And Washington was confused. And I can't, to your point, I'm not just going to sit here and... and make excuses for Penix. I think his game travels to the National Football League. Did he lose draft spots last night? There's no question about it. There were already going to be concerns about his health history, namely those knee injuries. But what he did at Washington on a consistent basis is exactly what he's going to be asked to do at the National Football League. Well, speaking League. of traveling to the National Football League, Jim Harbaugh, Many people believe that he might travel to the National Football League, leaving Michigan and going pro. Did the win last night, in your mind, solidify the fact that maybe one of the best coaches, if not the best current coach in college football, will no longer be in college football six months, two weeks, six weeks from today? I, I just, I, I don't see, unless, unless Jim Harbaugh just absolutely wants to be in college and loves it and wants to stay there. I don't see the reason why he would stay. He achieved the objective. He went to Michigan specifically to take them back to the mountaintop. Goal achieved. Mm -hmm. 
Now he would be having to deal with the NCAA, an inept organization that doesn't know how to govern its own sport, that's going to come down on them for recruiting violations, try to come down on the program and Jim Harbaugh for something that a staffer did. Now, you can make the argument all you want. They're like, Jim Harbaugh definitely knew. He claims that he didn't know. Meanwhile, there's rules about inducement on the books. And we got guys rolling up to National Letter of Intent and Lambos and Bentleys, and those schools don't get Letter of Intent. What I'm trying to say is, why would Jim want to deal with that when he's already achieved the objective? He's got a quarterback in Justin Herbert that he could go coach mm. with the Los Angeles Chargers, or he could go and be very close to his brother in that D.C. area, take the Washington Commander's job if they want to give it to him, and have the second pick in the draft. He could go coach Drake May mm. with the set, well, what is it, the most salary cap room in the National Football League? Really good point. He could install his system with new players that want to be there and want to play for him. His parents can move right there next to his brother. I think it just makes too much sense for him at this moment to go to the National Football League. You make too much sense anytime you talk college football. Invaluable insight from the one and only Joel Clapp. Thank you, Thank my you friend. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.